that's what happens in the Montessori classroom. These, these kids are working. They aren't working just to get a worksheet done. They're working because they're like, this is amazing to me. And does it, I'm so glad I have questions. Yes. <laughs> it sounds great. Um, yeah. But how would you sell that to a society like this? Uh, that's a make a lot of money. I, I uh, teach 45 kids at once. Yeah. And we have uh, one teacher in the classroom teaching. Yeah. And they don't want to pay two teachers to be wandering around while yeah. a bunch of kids play. Yeah. And they wouldn't see it that way. I and mean, it'd be really difficult to the, push that system. But I think it's better. Yeah. But well, I don't know if you get that. It's it's worked here in the past, um, and, and there are still many schools that do work well. What's what's failed many schools, I think, is um, the the parent education. Um, I. There's one school that I used to work for in Taiwan. That's how I came to Taiwan. Um, and they just they kept dropping students because parents had that same goal. How is this going to work? What what started working what, when they began that school though? Um, every Tuesday, they would bring in the parents, yeah, you know, whichever parents wanted to come, and they would give they would teach about Montessori or about child development or about you know whatever they needed for the uh, home um, or to understand this and parents would ask questions and you know if they got enough of those then they would have a night where they would you know talk about that issue and so they did that for three to six year olds and they did that in the six to nine year olds and they might have had nine to twelve year olds before I got there I don't know um, and they did that for many, many years. Um, the owner of the school ended up moving to, to Canada to work in another Montessori, to open another Montessori school there. And they stopped doing that and suddenly their, their level went down. So you have to, their numbers went down. So you have to get parents right when you can. I mean, the people accept a different form of preschool and kindergarten, even in, here in Taiwan. The, they, get a little nervous when you get into elementary school here. So you have to catch them at that preschool and kindergarten or even infant and toddler age, which I know very little about if you ask me direct questions about infant and toddler Montessori. But if you catch them at that three to six age and you keep and you do those workshops and you do that education, once they're into elementary, they're they want to sign up with you and not the regular school system. Um, and elementary is fascinating to me with Montessori. Um, we, we have these things called the great lessons. We don't start off teaching by teaching a, an actual, you know, okay, well this is, we go from here to here to here. We have these stories about the creation of the universe, um, about the, and they're, they're more mythical than they are, and, you know, we recognize this as the teachers. But it raises so many questions from the kids. It's not designed to teach anything necessarily. It's designed to raise a bunch of questions, like, well, you know, when the when the Earth, you know, when the Sun blew up, and the, you know, how did all these planets come out? And from that question, you actually help the child to research the answer. And then, if they seem not interested in something else, you actually tie that in. I was in fourth grade. I love Tecumseh, he was a Native American, uh, he was a uh, tribesman, uh, a tribe leader for the Shawnee Native Americans. I can't tell you much else besides that now, it's been years. But I loved him and I, I saw a play about him and I just started writing about him. I got every book I could and I wrote about that and it seemed to be that all my other subjects were falling behind. So um, I was about ready to learn about pie charts and stuff so my um, he just said, wait, you mentioned this one battle they had. And I said, yeah. And he said, OK, well, how many um, how many Native Americans died? Yeah, how many were fighting? How many died? How many you know, white people were fighting? How many died? Um, and I said, yeah. I said, I don't know. So he sent me off to research it, and I researched it. Then he took me from that to learning about how to make that into a chart or a pie graph or you know, different types of graphs. So I did that. Then he started asking me questions about, like, well, how did they trade back then, you know, getting into history? 
It's like, well, I don't know, and you know, research it, find out the right by the river. That was an important thing. Um, find out about the geology of the you know area, how that formed into the river, the Ohio River, and everything. So, what you can do with Montessori that is not so easily done with other forms of education, you can take one interest and just go almost anywhere with it. Um, I'm sorry, I went off topic with your question. I wanted to make sure I answered it fully before. But you can just actually spread out the whole, if you, there's one child that's interested in one thing, you don't just have to teach that and say, okay, put that away. Come on, let me show you something else. You can actually take that and just branch off into a million different things with it. Um, yeah. I'm just kind of curious. So, so when, uh, so do they do they a lot time for different subject areas? No. Um, you have a three hour block. And the kids um, work on whatever they want during that time. So. Uh, to a large point, yeah. I mean, if a student is seems to be working on something that's too easy, and they do it too much, then um, then yeah, you you try to get them interested in something else, um, and there's many different ways to do that, but you, you try to spark their interest in it. You, you don't say, okay, put that away right now, um, necessarily. Maybe it might be a point where you have to, but you don't just go, okay, put that away, come over here and learn this. And um, the materials themselves are designed to actually attract the students to them. So, like, um, <clears throat> for three to six year olds, the way we teach the letter sounds, we have these wooden boards, and cut out of them are the letters, but they're cut out in sandpaper and glued on there. Um, and in that age, they're really inter interested in touching things and feeling things. So if you notice that they're really interested in the, like the rough and smooth boards, which are just sandpaper boards that you can feel and learn rough and smooth, then you take that interest and you turn it into the sandpaper letters where they're you know, tracing out the letters and learning the sounds. Um, so uh, really, the, the, you don't just let them do whatever they want for the whole three hours necessarily. Um, you observe them and see how can I get them interested in other things as well. And you try stuff out. And the nice thing is you have them for three years in Montessori, so you have a lot of time to work with them. Are the schools bound by the <coughs> provincial and state outcomes? Like when they, uh, the students are expected to, to you know, in, in, order, in order to graduate, like yeah. usually you're supposed to, you're supposed to prevent certain outcomes that, you know, the child should be able to do blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. And um, the, the, I, uh, the, now if you're, now Taiwan may be a different thing. In America, uh, in the private, or in the public Montessori schools, yes. And they've had to adjust the curriculum a little bit because the curriculum is sort of reverse of, in some places, what Montessori does. But the, um, you know, the private schools, yes. What most studies have found, though, is that, and even if you look at the numbers of the public schools that have to take these tests, that the usually the Montessori schools do better in the same demographic um, than the non-Montessori schools. Um, and, you know, part of that is the teacher really knowing what those standards are and how to help the student get there. And then part of it is just the students love learning and uh, uh, theoretically, and, you know, should love learning at least with the Montessori system. Um, and that they, they just keep learning and learning and learning. Um, like when my, the student I told you about that was doing the addition problems, and he went to his teacher and showed him his book with a, he actually brought his book in where we did square roots. And she was like, how did you do this? Yeah, the square roots is way beyond what they were learning before, but he had already mastered the other stuff as well. I'm, care, um, I, I'm just in comparison to what the regular schools are doing. Like, yeah. the basis of it is, is constructing this pedagogy. That, yeah. that's, that's the basis of it. And the schools now are doing that. But like, the biggest difference is from what, like, listen to me talking about would be like, the management of the time and what, like, telling, like, because, like, when in the regular school, like, brain-based brain strategies are learned, where you, 
there is an activation period, and yeah. usually it's a whole class thing, but it depends on the age level and how many minutes you actually time it, right? right. It's like the, they go by Eric Jensen's theory that the, the, that the average child can, can focus their attention for so their not. age plus two. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got, and you've got a group of 13, if you've got a group of 13 year olds, you've got a maximum of 15 minutes before they're gone, right? Yeah, so you've got those my classes. Got, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you've uh, got to kind of get your, what you're doing out, and then you get the students doing the activities. Right. But is there, do they do something similar in the Montessori school? Um, the, the, well, there are two things with that. One is that the materials themselves actually teach, which I'll get back to in a second. Um, another thing is that I've noticed concentration levels way beyond that theory in the Montessori setting. Um, I, I use the same theory with... Uh, that's that's my, just the average. Right, yeah. But, have, yeah. Um, and when you, what, what Montessori does really is build our concentration a lot. Um, I, like I said, you know, I've, I've seen students sit there with 30, 45 minutes just working on one thing. And um, Maria Montessori has a story, and I wonder if this is exaggerated, but it's in her book, where a student was working with one material. Um, it's a cylinder block, and you have to take the, ten, there's, it has ten, it's a block of wood. It has 10 cylinders cut out of it. And you have to take the pieces out and mix them up and put them back in in the right spot. And obviously, if one's in the wrong spot, then you, know, you make a mistake. You can't fit this piece in here. And she tells that there was this one girl who did it, uh, I don't know how many times she says, let's just say 20 times. <clears throat> um, so she got the students in the class to start dancing around the student. And the student was still just not paying attention, playing with, you know, working with this material. And then this is the part I think is exaggerated. She said she picked up the chair that the student was in, and the student kind of collected them and did it in her lap, which I don't know, that seems a little weird to me. But uh, <laughs> um, but I've, I've seen similar things where students will be focused for so long on these materials uh, that they're actually, the, 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 the actual group lessons we do are so small. We show them how to do the material, you know, how to get it out, how to put it back, and then we let them do it. Uh, while they're doing it, they're actually learning from the material itself. Uh, and the materials themselves have something we call a control of error. If the child messes up, they have a way to check themselves. And if they find out that they messed up, they actually try to solve it. There was one boy, uh, this one four-year-old I was working with, we have um, a set of numbers there. And then we have another set that's completely separate. And um, for this, he had to match up the number, you know, the separate numbers with the numbers that we had already in place. And um, he got to six, but the six was upside down in the box. So it looked like a nine. And, you know, he put it over here at nine, and he, you know, seven, eight, you know, we got through all the rest of them. And then he picked up another nine. And he kind of looked at it, and he looked at the other thing, and he switched it out, and he was like, no, that's not right. And he like, put it back, and then he actually picked up all the numbers again, uh, kind of mixed them up a little bit, tried it again, and still came up with a nine there. And he kept looking at us, and I was just like, just keep figuring it out, and you'll see what you can do. And so he finally put the material away. I came in the next day, I turned the six over, um, just to be mean to him. Not really, but just because I knew that this would be the thing. And he, he, right when he came in, he went for that material. He sat down, worked at it out again. Again, he had two nines, and he was like, there are two nines. I said, no, no, see if you can find out what's wrong. And so he put it away. And the next day, I turned the six over again. Uh, but this time, he got it out, and he took it. Um, and he laid it all out, and he had two nines. So he turned the six over. Uh, so he actually had two nines in the number row. But he's like, that's not right. So he actually turned that six, nine back to a six, and then he turned the other six over and set it down, and he had it. Um, so uh, there's something about, you know, the, they actually learn from the materials, and they're engaged with it. And I have a feeling if I went in there and said to him, look, just turn that six over, um, it wouldn't have felt like it was his accomplishment. Um, it would, you know, he, 
he figured out that six and he suddenly went, this, I got this, I understand it. And that was his, that was his work, that wasn't mine. Uh, yeah. Who designs these materials? Uh, most of them were actually Maria Montessori. Um, a few of them come from Seguin, which was before her. Uh, she stole a few ideas from him. Uh, she gives him credit for them. But she, uh, she actually designed most of the materials herself. And uh, uh, just, uh, I would love to know the history of each one. Uh, but there are a few people designing new Montessori materials. But it's, it's still just mostly the basic set. And your teachers have to be trained in psychology as well as I, I yeah I, yeah um, for my training I, I had to I had to write about every child psychologist that was I could find um, which isn't easy uh, and we're also we're also more trained <clears throat> excuse me but we're also really trained in observation uh, of the child uh, the the hardest thing for a new teacher is actually observing um, because we're our instinct is actually just to jump in and say okay here's how you do it here's how you know but the the observation sitting back watching the whole class for I'm so, is, is that you Maria <laughs> speak to me again <laughs> Uh, but it's it's a lot of observation. I, I spend most of my time just sitting and watching the classroom. And I remember the first day it happened when I was an assistant teacher. And um, my co-teacher and I, we had 25 children in this room. And we, I was sitting on one side of the room. She was over on the other side of the room. And we just kind of looked at each other and went, look, we have nothing to do right now. No one needs our help for anything. But observation, yeah. It, I mean, we did have to take the psychology class and everything, and it, it is a huge. Uh, the the more you know about it, the better. So your degree is basically education. My my, my degree is in computer information technology. <laughs> I I got into Montessori really strangely as a teacher. I, I was my degree's in IT. Sorry, I keep looking down, but I see the flashing. Um, <laughs> Uh, my degree's in IT, and I went to uh, you know, information technology, and I was working for a place that built computers. Uh, we would ship out, I don't know how, to, like we were having trouble getting the shipments out every day. We had this huge facility. And um, then September 11th happened. We went from having trouble shipping out all our computers to, oh, well, this order needs to be shipped out next week. Let's do that. Because companies just stopped buying computers. And, uh, everything. They, everyone just went, oh, we have no idea, we can't spend any money on anything. So um, I got laid off. I had to find something else. And I saw an ad for a toddler Montessori teacher in the, uh, in the, in the newspaper. And so I went and I was like, oh, I need a, I need a Montessori. Yeah, I was like, I need a job. So I went and um, Right away, the interview was like, "Oh, you're Matt Bronson." I said, "Yeah." She said, "Are you Beth Bronson's son?" I said, yeah. She's like, "Oh, she was my teacher at Xavier." I said, "All right." <laughs> so, um, but I went in and had fun with the kids during that interview. It was just for uh, just to be an assistant in the room. Um, and then suddenly they got a, that I got the job at that school, and they got a grant for I think 20 computers, and they had no idea what to do with it. So I. I networked the computers. I, I set up a computer class for their uh, elementary school and did that. Um, then the school closed, so I had to find something else. I went into three to six Montessori, and my friend's mom, who owned the school I just mentioned earlier, she saw she came to talk. Yeah, she came to America <coughs> to hang out with my mom. May I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, but, oh, go ahead, and I'm going to finish this. Yeah. yeah. No, no, go ahead. I, I wanted, I'll write down your question. Just uh, okay. Um, but then I came to Taiwan, and I actually got trained in Taiwan. Um, the school put me through the Montessori classes that they had here um, with a translator, um, which was twice as hard. But um, got through it and uh, been 
unfortunately not doing it ever since because there's not enough opportunity in the small town I'm in, but um, loving it ever since. <laughs> so, and I'm sorry, your question. Uh, so, obviously now there is like a kind of conflict between the traditional education and not education. Right. Is there, any, do you know, is there any research, is there any statistics, like, which kids are better or smarter or I don't know how to say, you know, yeah. after they finish the, the close to I, I, traditional education or Montessori education? Yeah. So, do you, do you know any statistics? Um, the, the, unfortunately, there's not enough, just because Montessori people are more, they want to be in the classroom than researching, but there is some. Um, the biggest research that was brought out was, uh, put out in Science Magazine, which is unheard of from education article, actually. Um, they had a control, they went to a public school, had a control group of um, people that wanted to sign up for the Montessori school. <clears throat> but with that, you have to go through a lottery and just, you know, whether or not you get the right number and everything. Um, the, so the, the, um, the, Home life is probably you know largely the same um, of you know people that valued Montessori and you know wanted to send their kids to Montessori and those that um, you know wanted to but couldn't. Um, what they found was uh, long term um, there wasn't much difference. And I'm doing this off memory and I may be wrong on some of these statistics. There wasn't much difference with things like reading ability on standardized tests and stuff like that. Um, they did find a huge difference on interest in learning, on, um, uh, on social skills, things like lining up in line. Can you imagine if Taipei, uh, Taipei uh, train station had a Montessori school and would be lined up perfectly at the ticket counter? Um, but, uh, <laughs> or getting on the train, at least, uh, or the MRT. Um, but the, uh, uh, there was a big difference with stuff like that. Um, there was a big difference with math, I believe. Uh, math was a huge difference with uh, favoring Montessori. Um, and then the the ones that compare um, regular, uh, 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 the ones that compare the outcomes of the um, public Montessori schools versus the regular public schools, um, just on the standardized tests, usually the Montessori do, the schools do do better. But you can also say that's also because um, people who want their kids in Montessori generally have an interest in education where the regular public school doesn't always have that. So um, there are differences. I think the most important thing, though, is um, if you're thinking about Montessori, it's not necessarily about the test scores, because I think you can get those either way. I think the most important thing is you know, what, what, how do you want your child to learn, and what other goals do you want for them? Um, I, 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 if I had kids, which I don't, um, uh, I, I would want my kids to learn, um, to, to really be active in their school, to go in and you know be like, okay, I really want to do this when I go to school. I have a really strong interest in this and then be able to teach them that way, um, instead of just having, you know, oh, well, today we're going to do page 53, and you might already know it, but let's do anyway. Or you might still be stuck on page 40, but let's do 53 anyway. Um, so I think that's a big thing. I think if you're just looking at test scores, I think both systems would be fine. If you're looking for, do you want them to be passionate, like really excited about learning, even today, I. Then you can attest that I, I love reading, and <laughs> you know I, I just sit there and I'm just like, oh my, you know, what else can I learn right now? Um, I do this all the time, and so that's I think a big thing for me with Montessori. Yeah. What are the what are the hours typically for Montessori school? Um, uh, regular school hours. I mean, the there are half with preschool and kindergarten there are half day programs um, out there, but they're slowly dying away as more people need to work. Uh, but yeah, normal school hours, just eight till three. I, I went to school, my school day started at eight, um, had lunch, I don't know, noonish. Um, maybe we started like 8.30 or so. Had lunch about 12, uh, then recess, then came back in until three o'clock. Um, so it, it's just, 
everywhere I've seen it, it's been normal school days. Yeah. I'm curious, not so much in terms of like test scores, because uh, uh, the okay. Yeah. My experience. I went to not a Montessori school, but a Montessori inspired or sort of Montessori esque school, and I like a lot of the students from that school. I mean, it had it had its uh, benefits and its drawbacks. Right. But it's a it was a hell of an adjustment than going into a mainstream yeah. educational environment. After some people made that transition and others didn't. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm wondering what sort of research there is in the outcomes, not so much in terms of what the kids know when they get out of Montessori program, right. but how do they adjust into it? Because they will go back into a conventional education. Eventually, eventually, yeah. Eventually. What was your experience and what, what do you know? About my, experience was, uh, my experience was kind of hard. Um, I, I went until junior high and then went to a junior high, which is, they've already got their place um, formed and everything. You know, it's already, that's already hard enough. Even from going from regular, to, you know, from traditional to another junior high, uh, <clears throat> what what I've seen the gambit. I've seen, but and I'll tell you why I've seen the gambit. Of it. I've seen students who have had a lot of trouble. Uh, I've seen students that have done well, and I think one of the biggest things that made the difference was what the teacher was like. Um, I had, I mean, I had some trouble. I was like, well, why do I have to sit here? Why do I have to learn what I've already learned? And why do I, you know, uh, you know, I didn't know about, yeah, you know, I knew about this years ago. Why are we reteaching it um, and stuff like that? But the best thing for me was that I had a teacher who um, uh, we did. She did creative. Uh, she did mostly her year was creative workshop stuff, and that was the biggest thing for me um, when I talked to. Parents who have left my program, the, the ones I've worked at, and gone to another school, um, the biggest difference is which teacher they got, whether they did well or not. The teachers that just would want the kids to just sit there, do their work, and just do this other stuff that doesn't quite work well, they hate it. They didn't like it. The ones who um, had teachers who were very flexible and said, "Okay." It, you know, even in just the normal traditional setting, the flexibility was big. You know, you, I've got, you know, these kids who are interested in this and these kids who are interested in this. Yes, I still have to teach this stuff, but I'm going to figure out a way to make all my students engaged. Um, those are the students that make it from my experience. And uh, so I think if you're leaving Montessori and going into a regular, a, a traditional classroom, the biggest thing has to be um, the teacher more than anything, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm just going to come forward so it's a little bit easier to hear me. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll contribute my personal experience. I was about eight years old when I transitioned from a proper Montessori school to a state school in Tasmania. And very, very rural. It was a, there was a farm school, like most of the world. It was very, very traditional. Now, I entered that school in about grade three, about halfway through grade three. And at, at the time that I entered the school, I was given a pencil. I was told I had to print all my work, and if I was good, and I could print it nicely, then in year four I would be permitted to have a handwriting license, and I would be permitted to handwrite in, uh, in pencil. And then in year five, if I was handwriting really well in pencil, then I would be given a biro license, and I could start writing you know, handwriting in pen. To me, this was completely unbelievably useless, since I had already been, been writing chord cursive, which is similar to copper plate, with an ink well dipped scratch pen. That's what I'd learned at Montessori. I'd already, and I'd already learned how to use a scratch pen and inkwell and a blotter. And I was writing chord cursive beautifully. And I was, and this was all taken away from me. And I was given a pencil and told to print like a maniac. So and this, this to me was unbelievably frustrating and made no sense. And, and in fact, I remember when uh, when I was still in Wall, the reason why was my my dad moved jobs, so we went to from Perth, uh, which is all the way in Western Australia, to uh, to Tasmania, which is absolutely miles away. And of course there weren't any Montessori schools there, and certainly not in our area, not in this, the whole state anyway. So I remember before we left West Australia, my mother actually spent a lot of time with some state school educational materials, trying to, to actually make us aware that we were going to be actually taught in a very different way, and exposing us to some of the more rote learning methods. Um, but I can still say that definitely the as, as I would say, exactly what Matt has said, 
a teacher is what will make the big difference, the, the biggest difference. Fortunately, these days, probably the, there's less of an emphasis on, on making all the kids conform to a certain level. These days, even in the Australian state school education system, there's there's more of an emphasis in letting some kids learn a little bit faster. That's okay. Hey, if they want to, if they if they can actually prove that they can go beyond the level uh, of their age group, that's fine. For example, when at the Montessori school, um, I was in in the uh, obviously was, I was in the the kind of I passed through the the three to six category, and I was in what the eight to ten, eight to ten, six to nine, nine yeah, to twelve, six, yeah, five, nine, yeah. that kind of kind of category. I, I was learning. I had gone from from when I was five years old to eight years old in this Montessori school. But even at that stage when I was eight years old, the this, this school I was going to, the Montessori school, was actually K to 12. You could go all the way through um, and stay in the Montessori system before going to college.